hey all welcome once again i believe you had a great break session so this video is basically a continuation of the first part of aws lambda in depth series so the next part that i'm going to talk about is how a lambda function gets invoked so listen carefully here so you uh so there can be a different event source so the, these are different aws services as you can see like either be a dynamo db s3 bucket or an api gateway so this is the aws lambda setup that uh, aws would be provisioning for you so once you get an event or invoke api call is made the request would go to one of the it would go to aws lambda service and you do aws lambda service would then inter would have say a different aws lambda functions that are serving the traffic right now so whenever you create, whenever uh, an event gets uh, sent to the service, that is an invocation request comes. So it creates a runtime API call. And once the request receives to your function, say it has a specific, the function has set a specific destination. It processes it, say function one, basically takes up the execution rule. So execution rule is an IAM entity that would contain all the permissions that are required uh, the, your, by your function to perform it. So you have a proper execution role to access the other AWS service. Say for example, a put object event or maybe an, another API call or anything that you want. It should have the specific role or many any other activities that your function is trying to do. So it should have that role configured properly. Once that is done, so th this basically, this is the flow that takes place whenever you invoke a function. Additionally, your function can have a resource-based permission policies for your function, for, not only for the function, but also for the layers so that you can limit the invocation. So in case you want a specific, only an event from a specific bucket or from a specific API endpoint, you want that specific event to invoke your Lambda function, then you can set a resource policy definitely here. Okay. Next, we will talk about the different Lambda invocation. So the first thing that I'm going to talk is a synchronous uh, invocation and another is a synchronous invocation. In case of synchronous invocation, what happens, say for example, you are the user or you're the agent, whoever is trying to invoke your function. So once you do that, you send the event payload, it is received by uh, the Lambda function in real time. Once that is received, it sends the, the, the function, then processes the data accordingly and sends a response to the client or the invoker. Coming to asynchronous invocation, what happens? So previously, I'm just going to tell one thing. Uh, the, in case of synchronous invocation, the client or the, the invoker waits for the Lambda to give a response. But in case of asynchronous invocation, what happens in their the payload or even JSON, waits in a uh, in, in a queue basically okay so it's an internal queue and this event uh, this asynchronous queue would be further sending the traffic or your payload to your lambda function for processing so your client once uh, you or the invoker once published the data or the event it's something like a fire and forget temporarily the lambda service gives a uh, uh, an acknowledgement that yes i have received your payload but it doesn't guarantee, it doesn't say that it has been successfully invoked or not. Okay. The next uh, thing that I'm going to show you is this tabular format. That was the behavior for synchronous invocation. So Lambda invokes the function and waits for a response. And once the response is received, it sends to the invoker. So here the event source and services would be API gateway, state function, cognito, and even CloudFront. In case of asynchronous invocation, the Lambda pushes the event in a queue and sends a simple success response to the client without information, without extra information. So the event sources or services in that case would be S3 buckets and SNS. Okay. The next part that I'm going to talk about is another essential part for your Lambda configuration, which is event source mapping and event filtering. So there are certain uh, services where uh, in case of Kinesis data stream or even DynamoDB streams, 
So those streamings data, they are the rec and even SNS. In that case, what happens? The records are getting uh, av are available in the pool. Okay. So event source mapping is basically a service of AWS Lambda, which basically pulls those uh, or tries to fetch those records from those streams and sends it to your Lambda function. So I'll just give you a brief highlight of how that flow takes place. Okay. So here. For example, you are pushing some uh, important records or data to one of these uh, services. It can be a DynamoDB stream or an MSK, okay, or a Kinesis uh, data stream as well. So once you push the records, so for example, I am providing one a colorful, another black and white record to understand the flavor of event filtering in the same example. So next what happens, your event source mapping that is, uh, it's one of the Lambda resource that reads uh, from the event source for any records that has been published recently. And it fetches uh, in the form of batches, those records are being fetched from the sources. And once it is received by the event source mapping, in the event source mapping itself, you can configure some event filtering. Say for filtering of data, you are trying to send that for colorful uh, records, you want only that to be sent to your, function, to your function. Then in that case, you are doing a filtering of the events or the JSON that is being received by the service on the basis of certain uh, data and metadata. You can see in the pattern section on the inside the filter array, okay. You, you will have different configurations. You, you can have it like a metadata one or data uh, depending upon the that those fields, you can filter those. Once you do that, here's your Lambda function. In case the event filtering, the specific pattern matches. So the colorful event, you could, you could see that in the form of batches, that specific event would be sent to your Lambda function for processing. In case it's not matching, they are dropped. And even if you want, you can configure them to be picked up by uh, a SNS uh, topic or an SQS queue. So here are the failed events, you can configure it over there. Okay, that's all on this part. I would be talking further after a brief break uh, so that you can also have a quick walk around and come back for the next uh, tutorial here. Thank you.